Hey everybody, welcome back. Today I'm going to be talking about how spirits can be attached to certain places. I sort of want to talk about how spirits show up and how they get attached to people and places and things um, because I think it's helpful to know um, when you're communicating with the spirit if they're stuck there, if they're not stuck there, if they are even there. Um, and so here's kind of my four ways that I like to categorize them. Spirits that are attached to people. So the biggest example I use is like, say you're in an apartment um, and you're picking up energy. Well, sometimes that spirit might not have anything to do with you, but maybe your neighbor for whatever reason is, had invited it in or maybe it's related to them or something of that sort. So you could have not done anything and just the proximity um, to other people can cause you to basically have spirits come through. Um, and so sometimes when you're trying to get rid of spirits, this is helpful to know because you know, okay, it's not me, it's just the fact that I live so close to so many people. Another way that spirits sort of show up is when they're attached to a place. And this is kind of what you hear most often, like, oh, they died here, or maybe they love someone that's here. Um, and that can definitely happen. There's spirits that kind of get stuck in an area because they have unfinished business or they have things they still want to say or you know maybe something negative happened to them there and they're still just kind of stuck in that spot an example i can give of something that happened to me was that i was in an antique store and i was in the basement like looking around at stuff and i could feel a spirit there and it was so attached to its things and it was so angry that its things had been sold and given away and i just sort of got the energy that this spirit didn't cross over and you know it was still so stuck in our earthly mindset that it was still worried about its possessions um, and so it was there in that antique store with its things and it was pissed and because I was open um, it came to me and was like you know get the shit out of here this doesn't belong here um, so that's kind of an example of how spirits can be attached to a certain place the third way that spirits like to sort of show up. Um, I like to think of it as um, group intentions sort of manifesting energy. I, I hope this is making sense, but um, I think that a lot of times you'll go into places that they say are haunted and are not. For example, I went to the Stanley Hotel. Um, I was just developing my psychic abilities then, so I don't know if there was actually anything there. But the whole time I was there, I was like, ooh, there's ghosts here, there's, there's supposed to be spirits here. And every time I tuned into it, I couldn't pick up anything. Like I couldn't pick up any spirits, you know, and I couldn't, it, it could have just been that I wasn't connecting right. Like I'll give it that, but this has happened in other instances as well. Um, when a group decides this energy, this place is haunted or there's something here, you know, energy is malleable. It takes on what we say it is. You know, if you've heard of the whole water um, taking on like, um, a, the, is, there was like a study of water and memories or something like that and when you told the water happy things when you told the water sad things like the water changed it's sort of like that same energy it's like when you tell the energy of a place that it is a certain way it takes on that energy um, we have the ability to affect the energy around us and so when someone says this place is haunted you know there might be things that happen there might be scary spooky things and you might feel like there is an energy there and that's because there is but it's sort of you know that's not one specific person or thing it's just kind of this like oh this general feeling of this is negative um, and so sometimes that happens, especially when, you know, there's places that want to market themselves as being haunted, you know, for to get sales through the roof or something like that. Um, and so sometimes you'll come across this. You'll just be like, you know, I don't think there's any spirit here. I just think that this is, you know, group intention deciding that this place is negative. And it's really maybe not. Um, and, you know, I talk in my video about how to get rid of spirits, how you can clean up this energy. There's all sorts of exercises. You can clap and you can play music and you can put things in your home to just break up this energy. So I think the lesson here is just know that, you know, you can have spirits coming through that are attached to people. It could be attached to the actual place or it could be, you know, manifested by people in this area. 
Um, so those are just all helpful sort of ways that I like to communicate to people when um, I'm telling them that, oh, this spirit is, it's not necessarily attached to the place. It's not attached to you. This is kind of how I envision it. Um, and so please let me know if you guys feel like there's anything I'm missing. Um, the fourth thing really is just when a spirit is invited. Um, and I think this happens when people don't have good boundaries or they legitimately want a spirit in their home and they invite them there. You know, maybe that spirit never lived in that place. They they don't really are, they're not really attached to that person, but because they were invited, they show up. My mentor at the Aspen program, she sort of put it in this visualization and I love this. And this is my maybe why you're seeing those spirits. And that is that, you know, okay, you're a spirit, you're walking along a dark street, you're looking for help, you're looking for someone to talk to, and oh, here's this house in the middle of the street and the lights are on, and really that's you. You know, you're psychic, you're open, and no one else is, and so when a spirit finds somebody that is open and that could possibly pass on whatever they need to say, you know, they're gonna stop by and ring your doorbell. <laughs> And so I think this is, again, why it's so important to know how to be in control of your boundaries. And I talk about this in my basic psychic skills course. Um, if you don't, if you're not on top of your boundaries, you can be affected by these negative spirits. And so if you're into this, if you're looking into psychic stuff, just know that you're probably are turning that light on on your front porch in some sort of way. And so it's super important to know the difference between negative spirits and positive spirits. And sometimes if you know how they manifested and why they're there, then it's a lot easier to know how to get rid of them. I hope this information was helpful. Um, I think that I've just ended up sort of like coming up with these categories after doing so many readings. And um, I thought that the information might be good if you're feeling like you're having any activity in your home. Again, if you are, check out that video where I talk about how to get rid of spirits in your house. Um, assuming they're negative. If they're positive, they can stay around if you want them to stay around, but let's keep those negative ones out. Thanks so much for watching you guys and I will catch you next time. Bye.